Hello, everybody. Welcome. Appreciate you joining me this evening. Doggy. Um, we are, uh, you know, tonight we're going to be working in Vetric Aspire and we're going to just look at uh, kind of two tools, two tools that uh, probably don't get a whole lot of love and attention from people. And um, they can be very cool because it kind of opens the door for a lot of different things that we can do, especially when it comes to the emboss tool and 3D models uh, and things. So we're going to be working in Vetric and we're going to talk about two tools today. We're going to talk about the embossing tool uh, for 3D models, 3D models that you wouldn't think uh, typically to uh, bring in a carve. Uh, and then um, we're going to be looking at the single rail sweep tool to look at making some cool decorative type weave uh, objects and things. Um, let me know how things are going as far as audio and everything. I believe uh, it should be coming in loud and clear. And with that being said, uh, let's go ahead and jump right in. To today's lesson today's class is going to be a short one so we can uh, as we're going over this if you have any questions Q&A we can definitely do a Q&A and everything so I haven't done a Q&A in a while so if you have any questions uh, that I can answer while we're talking about these two tools uh, jump in and ask the questions they don't have to be related to these tools or anything but if you have a question you're curious about maybe I can help with the answer uh, throw them out there uh, and everything. All right, so let's jump over to camera number three. And let's get uh, me here and let's throw me down in the bottom left today. I think that's every day, right? Isn't that where I always go, the bottom left? All right, so I appreciate you all joining me. Uh, we are going to be working in Aspire tonight uh, just to show off these two tools and talk about them a little bit more in some detail. Uh, and um, uh, then, you know, if you have questions related to Desktop, Pro, or uh, Aspire, you know, just ask those questions. I, I'm, I'm happy to answer them while we're going. All right, let's take a look at the Emboss tool. Now, the Emboss tool uh, is a pretty cool tool. Uh, it's in the Aspire software, so it's going to be up here. Uh, it is on the third row of the modeling tools and uh, when you have your mouse over it, it says reduce the height of the component whilst keeping the surface detail. Because when we import models, sometimes they're large files and they might exceed the thickness of our material. And so we have to reduce the Z height of the model. And when we do that, we sacrifice detail. So some models, uh, especially low relief models, they're not ideal for embossing and the software will let you know that. They'll say, hey, this model's not really uh, the proper model for embossing and everything. Use, you know, the scale Z height tool or something. But there are certain models that are ideal for the embossing tools, such as 3D models that you would typically 3D print. So full 360 degree models I want to create a low relief of this, kind of a two and a half D relief of this object, uh, but it's going to come in very big and distorted. And when I reduce that Z height, I want to retain as much detail as possible. So I don't want to just scale the Z height because then I'll lose it, but I want to retain it. So let's take a look at... Um, how we would go about doing this. So the first thing that we need to do is uh, right here, uh, I'm going to exit out of this and uh, let's close this. I'm going to create a new file, but I'm gonna hold my shift key down when I click on that because I wanna change to a uh, high resolution. Now, I'm gonna kind of be somewhat restricted because I'm not creating the model from scratch. I'm kind of restricted by the quality in the resolution of the model that I'm actually going to be importing, but I still want an extremely high resolution in case I add my own model elements uh, to it. 
Uh, I'm just working on a 12 by 12 just for this example, 12 inch by 12 inch piece of material, uh, three quarters of an inch thick, you know, standard, you know, piece of wood. And of course, a standard piece of wood would not be 12 by 12, it'd be 11 and a quarter by 11 and a quarter, right? If it was like a one by 12. Um, but we're just going to round it up. We're going to go 12 by 12. Uh, and I'm going to be starting from the center, touching off on the material surface if I were carving this. And I'm going to click OK. Now, we're going to go into the modeling tab and we're going to import a 3D model. Now, the first model that we're going to import uh, is going to be located in my D drive. And uh, it's going to be here. And just to give an example, we'll bring in a Camaro, a model of a Camaro. Is Camaro in here uh, tonight? He might be. He might pop in later. Um, but uh, now it's going to take a second because this is a big model. It's a 3D print model. Uh, found it on CG Trader. I love going to CG Trader. Now you pay for the models there, but there you can find models that are expensive and you can find models that are inexpensive. Uh, I don't think I've paid any more than probably $35 for a model. Uh, generally, I kind of, you know, look for them under, you know, 20 bucks or something like that. But there are models that are beautifully done uh, and you pay for them. I mean, they could be 5500 bucks, whatever. Um, but a lot of times with the things I'm looking for or what have you, I can probably find it under, I'd say under 35 bucks. Um, hey, Camaro. Uh, so, all right. So if we look at this model that we brought in now, the first thing you always do is uh, we have to, when we import a third party model file, uh, this is an STL, um, we have to orientate that model. And the orientation is going to be important how we want it to look. Now, the first thing I do is over in the top right corner, we have our little icons for our view. And I'm going to click on the Z view. So I want it facing me like I'm looking from the top down. Okay. Now, the way the artist creates the model determines on the way we have to orientate it. So this is the top, physically, the top of the car. But if I flip this model to view the front, it's going to show me the bottom of the model because it's going to flip it like this. And that's going to actually be the back of the car. If I want to see the front, it's going to flip it like this and it's going to show me the front, but the car is going to be upside down. Let's take a look at those two scenarios. So right now we're at a top view and if I click on the front view, it's going to flip the model and I'm looking at the tail lights, right? So the front view. Okay. We don't want that. Let's look at the back view. Now it's going to flip it all the way around and I'm seeing the front of the car, but because the way that model was brought in, when I tilt, you know, it's one way or another. So once I get the orientation, I do want the front of the car. So it will be the back for me because this model, the guy, the way the, the guy created it. But now I have to rotate my Z axis. Uh, so I can rotate in a negative orientation or a positive orientation. Well, I just need to flip this thing 180 degrees around. So I'm going to go ahead and click on 180 degrees and get it right side up. Now, I now want to interactively rotate this model because I want to get a view, kind of a perspective view of this car, kind of getting a little bit of the hood and down the side and things like that. So now I want to go into the next section, which is interactive rotation. And I want to, I'll start off with the Y. Now for the Y, it's when you're moving your mouse left to right. And for the X, it's when you're moving your mouse up and down. So I'm going to go to the Y and I'm going to drag my mouse. I'm going to hold down my left mouse button and I'm going to drag it to the right and give it a second to catch up. Okay. So I'm going to turn it to the right. So now this model currently right now is, uh, it's kind of in a scaled in millimeters, uh, 2,283 by 661, but the software is thinking that it's inches, right? So what I want to do is I want to scale. I want to click the button to scale from millimeters to inches. 
so I can get a more realistic size, uh, which is 89 inches by 26 inches. This is a big model. Now my project is only 12 by 12, right? So I need to go ahead and size it down and I'm gonna take my largest number and I'm gonna, I need to fit within my 12 inch area, so I'm gonna make that 11 and I'm gonna click apply. Now, I've got kind of a perspective view, but I don't have a whole lot of detail. So imagine this as a flat relief model, just like you see it in everything. Uh, let's bring the rest of the car out. I'm gonna slide that slide bar down. So, uh, you know, we're getting kind of a, almost a side preview, but not really a whole lot of detail. So now I wanna interactively rotate on my X, and that's when I pull my mouse up and down. So I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna hold down my left mouse button and I'm gonna pull it down a little bit. And I'm not gonna go, you know, I'm gonna go in small numbers. I wanna, now I'm starting to see a little bit of perspective. You know, we're starting to see a little bit of detail. We got some of the hood going, we got the little fan on the, tr uh, the trunk and all that stuff. And um, we uh, want to, you know, at this point orientate the model to what looks best for you for what you're trying to go with so i'm going to bring it down just a little bit more uh, let's see here bring it up just a little bit there we go and uh i believe that's a good perspective i mean i could go back to the y and turn it a little bit let's slide to the right And not bad. I liked it the other way, so I'm going to go back to the left. About like that. All right, so now I want to go ahead and recenter the model on my board. So I'm going to click on center model. And I want to slide the slide bar all the way down. Now, this is a three dimensional model. And when we just put that model, uh, we, we took that zero plane and we positioned it at the bottom of the model. It looks normal, right, when we're looking at it like this? Well, let's look at it in the Y perspective. Okay, so if you can see on the screen, there's a red box down below, uh, and there's a black, a faint kind of gray line in there, and my model is, you know, sitting on top of that plane, but there's a lot of air under that driver's side uh, and tire and uh, the door and all and when this gets imported into the software hey Randy Reese um, when this gets ported imported into the software Vetric has got to add some material because it can't do undercuts and all it's gonna add some wood and it's gonna look really strange when we bring it in but that's okay that's what the emboss tool is for so let's go ahead and we'll click OK And we'll bring it into our project. All right. And let's get uh, front and center here. So when we look at the car in the 3D view, let's look at it straight on like, like we're looking at it at the Z. Okay looks normal for us right like it would be a low relief model uh and everything a little bit long it's longer than my piece of wood so i need to uh bring that down uh in size so let's go ahead and size that a bit let's go um well, actually no i'm in size let me see here oh yeah i'm in my material never mind uh i don't need to change the size uh, so it looks normal like this, but when we look at it in that Y perspective, um, the Vetric software had to fill in the gap. Uh, and uh, we'll get this to turn in just a second. It's going to take a minute. It's a pretty big model. Uh, a lot of, lot of polygons and everything. Uh, poly, polygons, yeah. Um, and so uh, we'll get this to... turn for us 
this Camaro file always takes the longest uh, for me to manipulate because it is just, it's big, it's huge. Uh, so we'll let that rotate here really quickly. Uh-oh, that chick's gotta do some thinking. It's trying to turn and regenerate. Bear with me, guys. This one's a big one. I probably should have done the pickup truck or something, but um, <clears throat> let's see here. All right, so let's flip that up. Come on, everybody wants to see what you look like on your side. Okay, let that regenerate real quick. And so the way that car was brought in, um, all of that material and meat underneath that empty space had to get filled because there's no undercuts and all. So how do we, how can we take a model like this and turn it into a low relief uh, to make it like a, you know, a, a simple carving? Uh, that's where the emboss tool comes in. So let's go ahead and um, let's get back into a, our tool over here. Uh, let this regenerate really quickly. It's working on it. Come on, come on, Camaro. We got work to do. We got work to do. We got to move on. This this model is super detailed, so it just takes a minute to... Uh, come on. I always have trouble with this. I knew, I don't know why I picked it to be the one to uh, work with, but it's the one that kind of can really emphasize what's going on. We'll do another one here in just a minute that'll be a little bit uh, quicker for us. All right. So, all right, back to normal now. Now, here's how here's how the emboss tool works. And it's pretty much rinse and repeat, guys and girls. So, um, these steps, you could pretty much follow them and do them the same thing with any type of model like this that you're going to emboss. And you're pretty much going to end up with what you want. All right. So, uh, first thing we got to do is over in our component tree, we're going to take our model and duplicate it. We need two of them. One is going to be the base and one is going to be our embossed model. You'll see that in a minute. Uh, thanks, Crystal. I appreciate that. Uh, yeah, she loves it. It was a nice one. Uh, couldn't do it without you guys and girls. Um, so I appreciate you all. All right. The, uh, now, the two models, we just created a duplicate. So we have two of them. We're going to turn off the top one and we're going to work with the bottom one. Now, remember what I said about scale the Z height. When we scale the Z height, it loses detail. Well, I'm not worried about it losing detail for the base. Okay. So the bottom of these two, there's one on top of the other in the component tree. The bottom one, I am going to scale the Z height and I'm going to make it the height of however tall I want my model to be. So I would like to set this height, I'm going to set it to uh, 5 eighths, 0.625. And I'm going to click apply. Now it's going to reduce that model down. Uh, and you're going to see that we have basically kind of a shell of a model. And if I turn this sideways uh, now, you can see that, let me get it up on the screen. You can see that it's got a height of about, you know, five eighths of an inch, right? But when we scaled the Z height down, we lost all the detail, but that's okay. If you remember, if you remember any of our past classes uh, and anything when we talked about models, we talked about like the add mode, how models combine with each other. And you've probably heard me say the reference that when you add one model to another, it's like taking a sheet and draping it over a car. That sheet will take on the form of the car underneath, 
right? So our base, we've got it reduced down to the height we want. It's got the general outline and everything, got the general shape, but we've lost the detail. Well, now we're gonna take our second component and we're gonna emboss it while shrinking the height down while keeping the surface detail. So we're gonna turn the base off for a minute. We're gonna turn on our top model here. And we're going to emboss this, reduce the height of the component while retaining the surface detail. And we gotta select the component first and then emboss it. Now in the emboss tool, we have a couple of options. Um, we have the option of scaling the height, which is what we're gonna do, but we also have detail smoothness. Now, if we zoom in on this, we can see that, uh, you know, it's scaled this down and the, there's detail there, but we're seeing kind of all the little polygons and, and, and things of this model and stuff. And we, we don't want that. So what we're going to do is we're going to scale the height down to 1% of its height. 1%. And then we can apply a little smoothness. Now, don't do too much smoothing here in the emboss tool because we're going to do some smoothing after the fact with our regular smooth tool when we combine the two models together. So I'm going to do just about 5% smoothing. I try to stay under 10% uh, smoothing in here just to get a little bit of smoothness. Uh, if I go too much, let's, uh, let's pull this up a little. Then I'm not leaving myself any real detail uh, to smooth out later, right? So we don't want to go too crazy with the smoothest in here. So I'm just going to go about 5% on the smoothing and 1% on the scale height and I'm going to click OK. Now what we've done essentially if I turn this on its side is we've created almost kind of a paper thin model. Paper thin model, right? This is going to be the sheet. Now we're going to drape the sheet that has all the detail over the base car underneath. So we're going to turn on the base. Okay. So now we have some thickness to our model and we have detail. Okay. So we have thickness to our model and we have detail. Now we can uh, create our 3D rough cut, 3D finish cut tool pass. We could, you know, do whatever we wanted, you know, else with this. But we've just taken a three-dimensional model. We've imported it into the software. We've orientated it to get a nice little orientation. And we brought it in. We created a duplicate of it. And we reduced that duplicate down to the size that we kind of want, the thickness we want our model. And then we embossed the other one to create that surface detail and when we put the two together, we get the surface detail with the thickness that we want, with the body that we want. And so now these two models would then get baked into one low relief model. Okay. And then we would create our 3D rough and 3D finished tool pass. Let's look at a second example. So let's go ahead and turn that off and let's import another model. Uh, we'll import kind of almost like a statuesque type model. Uh, now, if any of you uh, follow along and everything, I made a comment about, I love, I got this thing about uh, uh, Norse um, uh, mythology and I love Valkyries and stuff like that and they're pretty cool. Uh, we're going to look at uh, some other models and all, but let's go over to our downloads here and a uh, model that I recently just purchased off of CG Trader, uh, a Valkyrie model. We'll import that in. Um, bear with me a second. Mary Beth, how much you love me? Can you bring me my soda that I left on the table in there? Yes, I will. Thank you. I appreciate you. All right. So let's take a look at this model here. Um, when it uh, lets me take a look at it. It'll get into the orientation page. 
All right, so this one here, if I look at it from the top down, um, we have the, thank you so much. We have the, uh, again, the top is the top, right? The top of the head and everything. And uh, I want the front. In this case, it would be the front. Uh, you know, when I go to the front, it's gonna flip that model up so I'll be looking at the front, okay? So we have this Warrior Valkyrie, Warrior, here. And this Valkyrie is coming in about 66 uh, inches. It's kind of in millimeters, but uh, inches. No, it is inches. Uh, so I wanna scale it down to fit on my board. So let's go with, um, we'll go 11 and click apply. <clears throat> and let's get it centered on our board and we're going to take a look around uh, this whole thing uh and all uh so as i as i tilt this around and all um it is a three-dimensional model it's a statue basically right and it's something that you would normally 3d print well i want to carve it i want to create a low relief and i want to carve it okay so let's get back into that Z view. So we're looking at it face on. And then we're going to, once again, uh, we're going to interactively rotate. And I'm going to start off with. Let's see here. If I can get my data right back up, bear with me a moment. Okay. Okay, guys and girls. Uh the power went out uh, for a brief moment and it froze us up. Um, <laughs> uh, okay, sorry about that. Um, the power went out briefly and uh, it froze us up. All right, so what I was saying before we got frozen up is I'd like to see uh, a bit of the uh, shield uh, and everything on this. So I want to orientate this model uh, so that I get a little bit more detail. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to interact on the Y and I'm going to turn the model a little bit. And then I'm going to interact on the uh, X and I'm going to pull that down. I'd like to see a little bit of the top of the shield. Okay. And now I'm going to bring the model up again. 
bring the model up above the material. And now that I've got it sized, it is, I need to recenter it. And I need to kind of rescale it because of the wing it, way up there. I need to rescale it to fit uh, my board a little bit better. Uh, so I need to get uh, under 12. Let's go 11 here and click apply. All right, then I again bring that model up. So I'm gonna go with this pose here and we're going to click OK. I'd probably next time turn it a little bit more to see a little bit more of that back wing. Um, but if we look at this in the Z view, that top down view and everything, this is going to be the view of the model uh, when it gets embossed down to what I want. But if again, if we look at it from the Y view, like if we were looking at it from the side, all of under the staff and the spear, under the arm and the wings and everything, all of that undercut material where there's no support there had to get filled in. So Vedric, you know, filled it in with that material uh, and everything. And so uh, let's Big Daddy Fish, can it be done on the fourth axis? There's a possibility. Um, there's a possibility we could do it on the fourth axis. Uh, we'd have to figure out how it would be supported and held. We'd have to create a, a rod through uh, the statue so we can work between centers, you know. Um, but yeah, there, there, there could be a way of uh, doing that for sure. All right. Once again, these big models and all, bear with it. Every time a spire freezes, I freeze. Okay. Sorry, guys and girls. We'll get out of this in just a moment. I didn't realize I'd end up having that much buffering going on. All right. So looking at it from a side perspective... Man, it's struggling tonight. I don't know what the deal is. I say that every week. Um, is there a mint or a max quality model that you can use? Well, that's really going to be based on uh, how much processing power you, you have. Uh, otherwise, you'll end up freezing up like this. Um, Aspire is very CPU heavy. Okay, all right, so let's go ahead and let's get um, uh, past this. <laughs> I don't know why. All right, and we'll move on to other things. But uh, first thing, we're gonna duplicate this to create a duplicate. Then we're going to 
turn off the top one. We're going to scale the Z height of the bottom one. We're going to use the normal scale Z height. And I'm going to set this to, uh, I don't know, probably a half inch. And so we can see that when we scaled that model down to that half inch, we've, you know, lost all of the detail. That's what happens when you scale the Z height of a model. So when you get a model, when you purchase a model and it's designed, you know, really thick and all you're able to cut it in is three quarter inch wood, you know, and you can't go thicker wood and all that, and you got to scale the Z height, you're sacrificing detail. That's what we're ending up here with. Um, all right, so now that we have that, let's click OK. And now we're going to turn off the base. That'll be our base. And we're going to turn on the <clears throat> and on the top model, we're going to select it. And then we're going to emboss. So the emboss tool is the reduce height while retaining detail tool, the emboss tool. So once again, uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to bring that scale height down to 1%. Okay, so we get that detail and everything. And then we can add a little bit of smoothing. I'll probably go about 5% smoothing. I try to stay under 10% in this area here. If I'm going to do any other smoothing, it would be after the models baked together. Uh, but that'll be good there. And then we're going to click OK. And if we look at this, we've created that once again, you know, that kind of paper thin model, you know, with that detail and stuff. And so now we can turn on the base. To give the model some definition and everything while retaining its detail. And now we have a set of models that we can bake together. And then I will apply just a bit of smoothing just to see what I can smooth out without losing too much of the detail. Um, so now we open the door. I'm so sorry about the buffering guys and girls. All right, we should uh, be back to excellent connection now. <sighs> Lord of mercy. Uh, it might take a moment. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah, um, I really got to work on that. I don't know why. I keep saying that every week, but I really do got to work on that. I don't know why, it's, uh, why it does that. I get such great internet, and I don't know why it just freaking buffers every time I do that. I don't know. It might be a YouTube setting that I have wrong. Um I don't know. We'll find out. But anyway, we end up with a nice low relief model from a 3D printed model that uh, you normally wouldn't think about carving. 
unless you had something like a fourth axis or uh, anything like or something like that. Uh, so it is a very cool tool. Uh, it is a tool that if you do have a spire that you should really look into. Um, and uh, when it comes to models, I mean, planes, trains, automobiles, Empire, Empire State Buildings, and all kinds of cool stuff, um, there is a lot of different neat models that you can kind of work with, and it opens the doors for you that aren't normal, like low relief. You can make them low relief. Uh, let's go ahead and I'm going to uh, delete these two out of here. And then we're going to start working on the other tool. But let's take one last look at one more. I promise I, uh, I can't promise that I won't buffer, but we shouldn't. Uh, let's see what we can do here. Um, let's grab... The set of raven and skulls so if you guys and girls don't like skulls just it's a model just it's not nothing crazy um but it is a set of ravens on a skull here in a minute um okay so if we look at this model straight on uh we have this raven sitting on a set of skulls right <clears throat> kind of uh we want i want to get Kind of a top view of this uh, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to size it down I'm going to center it onto the material and I'm going to interactively rotate this but if we look at it just so you can see the 3d view kind of of it it's a you know it's a full 3d kind of statuesque model right and so let's get back into the uh, z view uh, i'm going to first of all interactive rotate on the y and what i'd like to do is turn it a little bit to the right so i'm going to turn it a little bit to the right and then i'm going to interact on the x-axis interactive rotation i'm going to pull that down a little bit i'd like to look a little bit more top down so i can see a little bit of uh, the skulls and crack and everything so something about like that there and now I'm going to pull my Z plane down to bring the model above the Z plane and let's get it centered again on my board and let's click OK now I'm not going to try to twist and show you all the views just imagine it's coming in all funky and extracted and everything. You can kind of see how it looks from this view here, right? So uh, it looks very strange. Uh, rinse and repeat. We're going to duplicate. We're going to uncheck the top one, select the bottom one, and scale the Z height of the bottom. This one I'll probably go about 5 eighths of an inch, so set exact height, 0. 0.625. These numbers would vary. You would kind of just see what looks good as a base model. Uh, and everything for you um, and all so we'll reduce that down and you can see by reducing it down we've lost all the detail but no fear we're going to click OK we're going to uncheck that base and hide it for a minute turn on the other model and this is the last example of this you've already seen it I don't need to beat it into you uh, we're going to turn on that top model We're going to emboss.
it's processing it there we go we're going to scale the height down to one percent again I'm gonna do a little bit of smoothing I'm gonna pull that up to about five percent I kind of like that number in this uh, emboss tool uh, we're gonna click OK and then we're going to turn on our base we'll bake those two models and let's get onto a straight on view here all right let's go ahead and smooth out this a little bit so let's to our smoothing tool I want to just smooth out the uh, uh, Raven a bit. And click OK. <clears throat> All right, so now we have a low relief model that we can carve in our board or whatever the case may be uh, that was once a three-dimensional model, All right? So hopefully you find that. Um, uh, Sylvia, would this, uh, would, this, um, would this work with smaller projects? Yes, uh, it should work very well with smaller projects and stuff. Uh, Mark Kulig, where did you get that model from? Uh, CG Trader. CG Trader. Uh, I like CG Trader. Um, for uh, models that I'm going to emboss and stuff, uh, CG Trader. But Thingiverse, Turbo Squid, CG Trader. All of these kind of uh, 3D printing, you know, model sites and stuff. Great place to get models, you know. Um, NASA.gov. You can get uh, NASA.gov does 3D scanning of the rover and Mars and the mountain, you know, uh, you know, uh, all that stuff, uh, you know. And they have those models for free. You can download the the 3D scans. Of those of those models and on you can bring them into the emboss tool and you can create like the rover model and all kinds of stuff if you're into scientific stuff like that um, but uh, um, uh, Smithsonian Institute all of their are uh, artifacts and everything they, they they laser scan them and they create 3d files of them and they're available for free download uh, there's all kinds of neat places but uh, CG traders kind of my go-to all right um, the uh, emboss tool, if you do have Aspire, if you ever get Inspire, something to play around with. It really opens a lot of doors for different types of models. You know, there might you might want a helicopter model or an airplane model or a building model or something like that that, you know, you really can't find a good model of it, but you can find a 3D print of it. Well, we can turn that 3D print with a little bit of orientation, perspective, right? And then embossing, we can get some pretty cool models and everything out of those all right let's go ahead and um close out of this and let's open up a, another file here um Had to think for a minute where my files were. Uh, let's go down to weave pattern. Let's talk about the single rail sweep and uh, making some uh, very cool weave patterns and stuff uh, with our single rail sweep tool. Um, single rail sweep tool just requires a profile, uh, a, a path to follow and a profile and that profile will get swept along the center line of that single line so uh, in here I have a variety of uh, different vectors um, 
one uh, such vector would be this one here. Let's go ahead and get rid of that rectangle. Uh, if you looked at that, what does that look like to you? It almost looks like chain link, right? Like chain link fence and everything. Well, if I had a profile, right? And I have, you know, vectors uh, that are overlapping like this. I could take and select these paths here, these rectangles that I've overlapped and all. And I could go into the modeling tool and go into my single rail sweep tool, center line vector. And I could use that as my selection. I got a little kind of a half circle profile there. So we'll make a half circle and uh, I want to sweep that between the spans, but now I, I want them to weave with one another. If I didn't weave them, let's turn the weave off for a minute and let's click apply. And let's see what we end up with without a weave. Okay, let's take a look here. Oh, let's turn off the uh, herringbone. Bear with me for a second. That's the herringbone pattern. Um, I didn't realize I had it on. Give me a second. Turn off the herringbone. <clears throat> okay, so if we look at this, uh, it doesn't really look like a chain link fence, right? It just looks like a uh, bunch of squares kind of intersecting and overlapping with one another. Uh, not very advertising. I mean, it's a cool pattern in itself and all that stuff, but I think we can do better. Let's go ahead and um, let's go into the single rail sweep tool again. Let's select all of our vectors. Use those as our selection. Select our profile. And this time, I want to sweep between the spans. Uh, you know, I want to sweep along that span and everything. And But I want to create a weave, an over-under cross-section. Now, how we do the Z-under and the Z-over, how they over-under each other, how they blend with one another, that's up to you. Uh, typically, I go with a 40% Z under and 100% Z over. Okay, so um, you could do you could do 40-60, uh, whatever the case may be. Uh, let's go 40-60 and let's take a look at that first. Let's go into the 3D view here and click apply. Okay, let's turn this sideways so we can see here. So we have more of that linked weave look, you know, uh, where uh, it is overlapping, underlapping, overlapping, underlapping and everything to create kind of that texture, you know, in this case, kind of a chain link texture. Now, notice on the uh, weave cross weave under over at crossings uh we're using the scale shape versus the add base we're not adding base meat to make it go over or taking away base meat and all that uh so that goes over and under we're just we want the models to actually intersect um uh sylvia i'll show you the herringbone pattern in just a moment uh and i'll show you what how to do that um the um, we just want kind of a partial overlap and a partial underlap. We want them to kind of blend together. So it creates kind of that weave pattern. Um, let's take a look at uh, another example. Let's go ahead and come. Let's go with a, uh, let's go with a, uh, let's go with a 20% under and a 80% over. Uh, 
Well, we'll go with 100% over for right now. And I just want to show you how the models blend together and then we'll move to a different pattern. So basically what has happened here, uh, let's, turn, let's turn where we can see up here in the distance in this corner. Basically it's flattened out. You know, we have 100% of our shape coming over it in order to compensate for it, it's flattened out the under. We don't want that. We don't want to squish the under just so the over can go, you know, go there. I'm a big fan of a 40% under and a 60% over kind of splitting that difference of that 100% total so that we, let's get it to um, regenerate here. <clears throat> so we get kind of that nice uh, over under look and it doesn't look squished. You know, we get that illusion of that weave going over and under but we don't, we're not squishing down or flattening out one of the parts too dramatically. It's still flattening out because it's, you know, it's still coming down under the part, but it's not, we don't want that Z under number too small. Okay. Um, two. Um, I don't know why I'm buffering. The damn connection says is excellent. Excuse my language. Uh, we don't want... Come on, man. The over jumped to 100. No, it actually didn't. It, it jumped to 100 because of the new model, of the model that was generated. That is 100% of the model. So it, it's always going to bounce back to 100%. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's basically waiting for the next command or the next adjustment or whatever. So it, by default, the minimum is 100. We can we can type in whatever number we want, uh, but when it's finished generating the model, it's just gonna roll back to 100 at the end of it. But it's still giving us our 4060, but when it rolls back, resetting itself, it resets to the 100. The Z will reset to whatever the last number you put in it and the Z under, but the other one, Z over, will go to 100% on the reset. All right, let's take a look at a, another pattern. Let's go ahead and turn this layer off and turn that off. And let's look at here. Now imagine if I have these wiggly lines here uh, you know, kind of interlacing with one another. So this vector is kind of interlacing and basically it's just a vector that is duplicated and mirrored and duplicated and mirrored and all to create this pattern. Let's go ahead and select this. Go into that single rail sweep tool. We're going to use the pattern as our cross sections, our drive rails. We're going to select our profile. Again, it's just a half circle, kind of kind of emulating like a rope. And we're going to uh, do a 40, 60 as well on that and click apply. And you see, this is what um, uh, Fozzie Bear was talking about. Uh, the Z rolls back to 100. After I clicked apply, it rolls back to 100. Let's go ahead and take a look at this. And we end up with kind of this uh, weave basket type, weaved rope type texture. Now with this weave rope type texture, if I was doing this on a fourth axis, if I was doing this on a fourth axis, I would, uh, you know, I'd have my vessel or my vase, if you will, uh, and then I would have this model wrapping around that vase, right? So uh, let me give you an example of that. We're going to close this tool. Now this isn't the, uh, this is detouring just a little bit, but we're going to uh, close this tool.
And in the 2D view here, let's go ahead and create a new layer. And let's turn off that layer for a minute and turn off that layer for a moment. And let's come in here and draw. I'm going to draw a rectangle. And let's go into node editing. I'm going to turn this into a Bezier curve. Uh, let's pull this in a little bit. Pull this out a little. Let's pull this in quite a bit. Pull this out a little. Let's uh, add another point. Okay. Now, let's delete, let's go into node editing and delete this span right here. Um, not delete the span. Yeah, delete the span, that's the term I wanna use. All right, and so if I use another tool in Vector Aspire called the Create Shape by Spinning, you know, tool, spinning vessel tool, uh, and everything, I can go ahead and select this vector, open up this tool, and I'm going to create a rotate around a uh, line from a start point to a center point and click apply. <clears throat> okay, if we look at this in the 3D view, all right, well, we're going to get rid of uh, part of that weave. Uh, but um, the weave was still turned on, the rope weave was still turned on. Um, let's uh, close that tool. All right, let's get rid of um, some of that weave. We don't want that whole rope around there. Okay, so in my 2D view, let me turn on that layer. Okay, this pattern layer here. I want to, uh, let's take and draw a rectangle. Actually, I don't need to draw a rectangle. I just need to, hold on, let me get rid of that rectangle. Uh, let me take my model here and create a vector boundary around it. Create a vector boundary around that. <clears throat> okay. And let me draw a straight line from, uh, let's go a little up the neck, from here to here. All right, on this model here, this model, let me trim, bear with me, I gotta trim one thing away. Trim that away, trim that away. There we go. All right, so I'm gonna use this vector. On this component, I'm going to clear the area outside of the selected component. Let's turn this one off for a minute. Okay. All right, let's go back and look at the 3D view. 
Let's turn on our other model. We should have left a little bit of overhang. I don't know why it's buffering. Um, every time uh, Spire goes to do something, it buffers up. Uh, so we've got this pattern here. Of course, then we would duplicate it to the other side to create the other half of the vessel. And this would be a turned piece that we would do on the, you know, fourth axis or, you know, if we were carving half a vase or whatever. So we could create kind of that, you know, pattern. We could create that really unique looking, uh, you know, like an old... Uh, Italian wine bottle, right? Or something. All right, let's take a look at a, another option here. So let's turn off those two layers and turn off those two models. Okay, let's go into uh, here. Uh, someone was asking uh, how we do the herringbone pattern. <clears throat> On the herringbone pattern, it is basically two boxes, two rectangles. Let me pull them apart here real quick. All right, so we have two rectangles, uh, one longer, one shorter. Uh, they are placed on each other and then they are stacked. Um, basically, we take the corner and we stack them and we just keep stacking and stacking and stacking um, until, you know, we end up with a pattern like this herringbone here. Okay, and you know, you can fill up your whole sheet, you can do whatever you want, uh, but you know, we just kind of just keep repeating this pattern over and over again. Uh, it doesn't take much uh, to uh, fill up a pattern. I could literally hold down my control key um, and I could drag this pattern out and you know, stick it to another one and just keep doing that, you know, until I get my full sheet, you know fill in the blanks and all that stuff. So once you get a few rows done, it's just stacking, 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 stacking. Once you have those vectors stacked, it is the matter of creating a shape uh, on these vectors. Typically that shape is uh, either going to have a uh, chamfered edge or a rounded edge, however you want. In this case, I'm gonna do a rounded edge. Uh, we'll do about a 60 degree angle uh, we'll give it a base height of however thick you want the base to be. And, but I'm going to limit the height of that angle. I'm going to limit that height and I'm going to limit it to a height of about a 30 second. 0.03125. Uh, when we click apply, um, that will build up these half inch blocks and then uh, it will chamfer the edges and flatten them off at the top. There we go. And if we look at it in the 3D view, let's zoom in here. So we have these 60 degree chamfered edges flattened off at a 30 second uh, to create that kind of 
herring wheel pattern. Now you could have your pattern however dramatic you want it as far as the depth and the angle of that that V cut, uh, you know, or that chamfer cut, you know, if I limited the height to a 16th of an inch, 0 0.0625, let's get rid of the decimal and click apply. If I changed my angle from 60 to 45 degrees, uh, if I, you know, um, So if we look at this, so by limiting the height to a 16th of an inch, now we have more of a ridge, more of an angle before it flattens off. So that creates a little bit more uh, deeper channel, you know, between the pattern, right? Just widens up that channel a little bit and all. Uh, so as far as the question, is there a ratio uh, to the uh, rectangles? Well, let's take a look at, let's take a look at just uh, three of these as an example. Okay, let's grab this. Come on up, this, this, and this, and let's pull them down here. And let's take a look at how they're assembled. So our um, lower rectangle, if I take basically looking at let's take this one here and let's take this one here and let's pull this one and drop it here okay so the width of the base of the leg is basically the half a little bit a little bit more than half of the uh the short leg and then when the short leg and the tall leg uh, come together. Let's pull this apart. Right at that corner, I should be able to drop that corner in there and make contact with this base here. So you could you could create whatever aspect ratio you want. Uh, just to give you a general idea, on mine the base here has a. Let's uh, rotate this straight up and down. Let's rotate this sideways. All right, so my little one is one and a half inches wide by three quarter inches thick. And my leg is three quarter inches wide by two inches long, by two inches tall. Okay, so it's three quarter inches tall, one and a quarter inch wide on the short leg three to quarter inch wide by two inches on the long leg. Um, they get rotated in a 45 degree uh, orientation and they drop together. And when you bring two together, no matter what orientation you bring them to, they should be able to interfere fit with one another you know what I mean okay so that's that let me know if that helps you out there uh, and stuff okay so that's the herringbone pattern let's go ahead and uh, delete all that let's talk about another pattern here uh, with the single rail sweep tool getting back on track um, There we go. Okay, let's change the color on that so everybody can see it. Black. So, here we have just a very simple grid, right? Uh, just a very simple grid. We have horizontal lines and we have vertical lines, okay? That's not a bunch of rectangles and all, it's just lines spaced out. Now, on this one, I've got a profile shape that has a little bit of a radius than a flat top here. If we select this pattern here 
and go into our single rail sweep tool and use that as our selection. And then we grab our profile and we create that weave pattern. I'm going to go again, 40, 60. That's kind of my lucky numbers. I like those. And we create that pattern. You could pretty much guess what we've created is just a simple weave. This one's a simple weave. But we could do Celtic heart weaves. We could do whatever shape, you know, uh, that you want. Uh, but we just created just a very simple weave pattern, right? Uh, with that particular shape. This is kind of like a flat, that profile, that profile we created here, this profile kind of rounded edge, flat top and all, creates kind of that basket weave type flat, you know, pattern and everything. Um, your patterns could be, you know, uh, really kind of, uh, you could have fun with it uh, and stuff and you could do some cool things. Um, let's see here. Let me see if I can, uh, let's see what I've got. No. So just horizontal and vertical lines. Um, we want those horizontal and vertical lines. It's the center line. So whatever, whatever size our profile is, it's getting stretched on that center line. So uh, to achieve that weave, let's come back here. Uh, let's turn the model off for a minute. <clears throat> and let's turn this off and let's go to here. We have our, uh, basically, I created rectangles and I spaced them across the board. And then I determined, you know, each one of these, okay, is the same width as each of the rectangles and then there's a space then there's another set space another set right now i need to find the center line of these so that's where the center line comes in uh let's uh turn that center line back green so it makes sense so you can see it okay and so the center of those grids now our grid gets turned off or whatever and we have our center lines which ultimately allows us to create our weave pattern within you know and uh, ultimately creates that weave right so whatever you can have all kinds of neat little patterns uh let's look at uh some basic weaves uh let's turn off that model draw a line down the middle here oh you son of a gun hold on control z Let's do that again. Let's draw a line straight down the middle. All right, let's turn this on off this green color. I was wondering why I couldn't see anything. Uh, let's change that to black. Okay, let's uh, select our arc here. Let's select our line and mirror by flipping it about the line. Perfect. Choose our scissor tool. Trim, 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 trim. Aw, not the prettiest heart right now, but it's a heart. We can work with it. Um, let's go ahead and size that down. Not bad for on the fly. I would do a much better job with that, but uh, let's go ahead and uh, hold down the control key. Let's grab this here. Let's grab that there. All right, so I'm gonna take these two and center them on the material. I'm gonna take this guy, or I'm gonna take these two and I'm gonna group them together. Hit the letter G on the keyboard, ladies and gentlemen, G. 
uh, to group them together. I'm going to select uh, this. I'm going to select this, and I'm going to align to the center of those. Perfect. All right. Let's go ahead and create a little profile. Da -da -da -da. Let's go with a circle. That'd be fine. Create a little profile. Half inch diameter is good. Uh, let's go into node editing and let's cut the vector here. Cut it here. And delete that. Now, I want a little bit of a flat top. I want it rounded, but I want it kind of to flatten off on the top here. So let's go ahead and get a straight line and let's just pick a straight line right there and take some scissors and trim that okay um then i want to take my fillet tool and i want to smooth those sharp corners a little bit there we go all right so we're going to use this as the profile Okay, that's going to be the profile. This is going to be the path. Okay, let's ungroup everything. Uh, let's select our path again in our single rail sweep tool. We're going to use our path as our cross section here. We're going to then select our profile and on our weave again, I'm going to go as a 4060. And we're going to click apply. Let's go ahead and come in here and we have our linked hearts, right? So um, just, uh, you know, some general things to think about, right? You know, what, what shapes do we want to create? What do we want to, um, you know, what would we like to kind of have kind of that weaved effect? And our single rail sweep tool is going to take whatever profile we create and you know it's going to sweep that profile along our center line whatever we whatever our profile is and um and then the in combination with that being able to weave where those lines intersect over and under we can come up with a lot of pretty cool different patterns and designs and and things like that you know uh so Hopefully, you found this a little interesting. Uh, let's change this up a little bit on these hearts. Let's go back. Let's reset this. <clears throat> okay, we're changing up a little bit. We're going to step back a little. And I'm going to come back to just a simple rounded arc there for a moment. And let's uh, select this or ungroup that first of all. Uh, let's center rail sweep that use our profile rounded this time not flattened off on the top this time uh let's go with a 3070 3070 click apply you know however you want it to look right um, 
you know, just whatever, you know, floats your boat. My profile for my hearts, uh, my profile was a little big, my round circular profile, so they're kind of fat right here. I'd probably thin up that profile a little bit, or I would widen my heart a little, you know, or whatever the case may be, uh, to where, you know, so I get a good overlap and all. But just things, just food for thought, ladies and gentlemen, right? Um, is there a way to change vector line size? Um, no, uh, you're, you can change your profile size of how, how big of a profile gets swept along that. So it could be a thin needle, it could be a wide, you know, what have you. So right now, the diameter on this is a, you know, a half inch uh, diameter. Um, I could thin it up some, or I could shrink it down in size or whatever the case may be. So we could narrow this up some. As far as our profile is concerned. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, delete that one. Let's select, <clears throat> but we can't change the, thi it's not a text document, we can't change the, the thickness of our vectors, right? Their vector lines, so unfortunately we can't, we can't manipulate those, but we can manipulate our profile that gets swept along there. Uh, so we can use our selection, we can come in with this more narrow standoffish. Uh, let's go, it's a little bit taller. Let's go 40, 60, click apply. Right, let's see here. Um, you know, and we could, you know, make our lines thinner, right? Uh, you know, our hearts thinner, we can make them thicker, we can make them whatever. Now, they're not the prettiest hearts in the world. I didn't, they're not, they're by no means, they're shaped like a heart. They're kind of wonky looking, but you get the idea, right? Uh, so, um, you know, your shapes, your vector outlines could be whatever it is you want it to be. And where they overlap is where they will, they will weave, right? Uh, so you can create some really unique patterns. Um, uh, just, you know, thinking about uh, way, uh, you know, things uh, occur uh, and stuff. Um, I mean, even if it was, let's say, a... Node editing. All right, select this one, select this one, hit the letter Y on the keyboard. Ah, oh, pull this one up to here um something looks funky Not too shabby. All right, so uh, control, let's, uh, let's select both of these, hold down that control key, oops, select both, double click on them, hold the control key down, trying to pick that spot. Uh, 
hold the control key down. You know, whatever the pattern would be. Now, in this case, I'd probably do a, let's go with a three-sided polygon. About like that. Now, when you're creating your profile, you don't use the bottom line. So, um, we're going to delete that span. Let's bring this down just a little bit. And, all right. So we'll select our profiles, single rail sweep, that'll be our selection. Our profile here, we're going to, uh, we'll create square corners on this one. Uh, weave, let's go, we'll just stick with a 4060. You can guys can play, girls can play with the numbers however you want. And um, ooh, that's funky looking. Um, let's uh, let's reduce. Let's undo that. Let's hit reset on that one. Let's go back into the two D view for a minute. Let's take this guy here. Close that tool for just a second. Does the starting point of the weave make a difference? No. Uh, Fozzie Bear doesn't. Let's go ahead and size this down a little bit. All right, one more time. Let's grab that. Create square corners. Uh, use our profile there. 40, 60. Now, uh, we could even, um, I could create multiple patterns or I could create multiple shapes to where it transitions from one shape to another. Uh, in things, we could uh, select different vectors and, you know, uh, in turn to use as cross sections and then you know so you can change it could transition from a point to a rounded arch and things like that so you could play around with all that it's a pretty cool tool uh, and you so you could weave where it goes from like a pointed shape to a rounded shape or whatever the shape may be uh, let's take a look at our 3d view you know so you guys and girls uh, get just here right 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 okay so let's look and see what we got here um do you help new beginners to aspire one-on-one -on -one? uh if yes how do i get in touch with you uh monza monza so yes uh digitalwoodcarver.com under explore cnc training there are two training options one is a monthly subscription one is an annual subscription uh, you can sign up monthly or annually uh, for one-on-one uh, -on -one training. Monthly is an hour a month of training plus two free project downloads every month. Uh, annually is 12 hours of training that you can use however you want throughout that year, one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, and those two subscription options are on the Digital Woodcarver website. Those are the two subscription options. Um, there's also, a, if you don't want to subscribe, uh, there's a non-subscription option as well where you just pay by the hour. Um, digitalwoodcarver.com explore menu CNC training all right so um, let's see here uh, Sylvia Klosterman let me know if the uh, sizes of the rectangles that I gave you helped you out with that herringbone pattern um, and Fozzie Bear you know does the start point of the weave make a difference no because on our vectors um uh when it come now when it let me say that uh perspectively um our weave is going to travel 
in whatever direction the vector is, especially on a closed vector, right? It's just wrapping around, wrapping around, right? Well, let's go back and look at, let's close this tool and let's go back and look at our rope weave where it's, it's open vectors, right? Where we have a start point and an end point. And we'll go back and look at that. And then we're going to wrap it up for the night, guys and girls. It's going to be a short night. Um, let's, all right, let's go back into our rope pattern here. And we'll just, uh, we'll grab three of these. Okay. And uh, here, let's grab three out in the field here. There we go. All right. Now, if we look at the, if we go to node editing here, um, we have a start point up here that comes down and then a start point down here that comes up, right? Well, if I come over to the top points and I make all four of these the start point, so make start point, make start point, and um, I come in here in my single rail sweep tool and use that selection and then grab my little pattern and um, let's go 40, 60, click apply. Going to our 3D view. You know, our rope weave is still the same. So it, 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 uh, it's following a single line. Now, point start points matter on a two rail sweep. If we have, if we're using a two rail sweep and we have one start point on one end and one start point on the other, and they're going opposite directions. Well, when it tries to extrude that model, when it tries to sweep between those two rails, it's going to twist them. It's like taking a towel and wringing it out, right? It's going to twist that model. So in a two rail sweep, it's very important that the start points are the same and our drive rails are driving in the same direction, those arrows uh, and everything. But on a single rail sweep, this profile is getting swept along each one of those lines independently. So it really doesn't matter where the start point is. Okay. Um, so hopefully you can come up with some cool patterns and stuff. Uh, these patterns are great uh, to uh, make uh, different things. And one of the things uh, just to show you, um, the last thing to kind of you know talk about these is when I create these patterns, I create little cross sections of them. Uh, so let me uh, delete this. And let's look at one of the cross sections. Uh, let's grab the chain link, just as an example. Okay, so here's a cross section of the chain link pattern that creates that I can create a re repeatable pattern. So where it stops here on this edge is where it starts here on this edge. Where it stops here on this edge is where it starts here on this edge. So I can create a repeatable pattern out of that to be able to do a lot of different things with. Uh, and so in the case of this, uh, you know, let's say I had a pattern that I wanted to fill up my whole board with, uh, with that cross section, I can use the create a texture area component tool. Uh, I can come in here and, you know, uh, with my, uh, component selected, I can come in here and I, I don't want, it's going to be zero, zero, zero all the way down. Uh, and I'm going to uh, click apply. And it's gonna take that cross section or that section and it's gonna sp sp spread it all the way across the board. 
um, you know, creating that repeatable pattern. Same thing, let's go ahead and close this and let's turn on uh, like that herringbone. Um, that herringbone pattern here is just a cross section. And again, where this finishes off, this side starts. Where this side finishes off, this side starts. So I can stack these however which way I want to stack them and it's going to create a repeatable pattern. Once again, I can come in here and I could do this with the copy array tool too if I have Vectric VCard Desktop or Pro. I'm just showing you in this tool here um, how we can create a texture area pattern. And I bet you it's going to do the chain link again. Or does it do the herringbone? Let's find out, y'all. It would help if I had the model selected. Yeah, there we go. Make sure you got the correct model selected. Uh, and uh, let's click apply. And so it's going to create a, a, a complete pattern of that little cross section. So when I create a pattern, I end up cutting out a cross section and I, I make it to where it's a stackable tile. Um, so I can create that entire background component. Now with the Spire, I could have this as my background texture and then I could build up my text and stuff on it uh, and things and it would help if I would not move the board. Bear with me a second, let me put that back. Um, I could trim or clip or remove parts of a section uh, to create just the border frame and hollow out the center. We can do all kinds of things with clipping now in Desktop Pro and Aspire with these cross sections and things. Um, uh, the rope weave. Last one and then we're going to call it a night. The rope weave. Is a little cross section here. Again, it becomes kind of a repeatable texture. Uh, sort of like if we were looking at the uh, clip art that comes with the software we have what's called uh, texture area tiles you know these are repeatable patterns to create those texture area tiles um, and, and things where they can kind of repeat one another and things um, these little cross sections uh, do the same thing so I can come in and create that texture area component and fill up the board with that repeatable pattern. So, any suggestion on cutting a chess board? Um, that is a topic for a whole nother class. But uh, on a chess board, if you're talking about the chess pieces, because cutting a you know, uh, the rectangular patterns is basically just creating V grooves, uh, you know, unless you're doing some kind of inlays with darks and whites and all, then that's a whole nother thing. Trust me, it can get very complicated depending on how complex you want it to be. But you could create your grid and that's just a V carved toolpath to create the individual squares. What's going to be the most important thing is creating the actual chess pieces. There's models of chess pieces that you can import into your Vetric software. And if you do it as a two-sided job, you can cut those chess pieces out. You can find models for chess pieces on places like cgtrader.com, uh, like what we talked about. And you can import them as a 2D model, do them as a two-sided project, cut them out so it's that three-dimensional chess piece. And uh, that's a topic for another class. So, uh, but uh, that'll give you enough to kind of get you going. Um, but chess boards could be very simplistic or they could be very elegant. You're going to do some inlay work and things like that. Uh, it could be themed, you know, and you could find some very cool themes of chess pieces out there. You know, they've got uh, all kinds of themes, uh, you know, uh, uh, outside of the traditional knights and kings and all that. They have different, you know, video game type themes or what have you. Uh, chess boards and all and you can buy those models very easily on CG Trader and stuff or or things like that But that is a topic for another class uh, mark um, All right, everybody we are going to wrap up for the evening. I appreciate your time 
hopefully you found this uh, interesting and uh, uh, maybe you could, if you have a Spire, uh, you, or get a Spire one day, you can play around with some of these tools and play around with some of the models and things and have some fun with it. Um, it really opens up a lot of doors, uh, when it comes to 3d models and all what we can make from 3d models that people have come up with some very cool 3d models for 3d printing and things. Uh, so we can, uh, you know, have some fun with that. All right, everybody until next time. I'll see you soon. <laughs>